These are both good. Mm-hmm. That hasn't happened in a while. I know. It makes it difficult, though, when they're both good. quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real-world perspective to the real-world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And we are back with another double-blind head-to-head, which means we have no clue what is in either one of these glasses. Nope. They've, it's a surprise. It is a complete surprise. They've been drawn at random from our blind sample pool, a bunch of bourbon and rye matchups. So these could be bourbon or rye. We don't know. No. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to smell them, taste them, give them a rating, let you know how they compare. Then we'll find out the price of each one and see if that changes our rating before we find out what we're drinking. We do it this way so that you get the most honest opinions possible. And to be quite honest, it's pretty fun for us too. It is fun. Let's go ahead and get into the nose on okay, glass one. While you're doing that, I'll let you know to check the video description below if you want to join our Patreon. That's where you can get our barrel picks. You can be plugged into our community, get involved in our Discord server, get you're making faces. Okay. You can uh get plugged into our community, get on our Discord server. We help each other out over there, trade samples help people find things. All kinds of good stuff is going down over on Discord. And we got shirts. We got shirts yeah. as well at stuffandwhiskey.com yeah. along with some glassware coming soon. All kinds of stuff down in the video description below. What are you getting on glass one on the nose? So my first initial sniff, I got, a little, sweet. I got a little stinky feet. And really? I hadn't gotten that in a hot minute. And I don't know, I kind of liked that. Okay. It's a very nostalgic thing for me, which is so weird to say. Then my second smell, I got some like fruit roll up, fruit leather type vibes. I can vibes. see that, yeah. And then my third smell, I got air, like the air of the outside. Those are all notes that I think you like. Yeah. So you those like the nose of this. Those are all positive notes for me. Yeah, I like the nose of this quite a lot. It's kind of sending me down that lane of like vanilla ice cream. It's a very vanilla forward profile. Interesting. Okay. But it also has some like that fruit fruit leather, fruit roll-ups mm -hmm. type of vibe to it's it. It's a little more healthy than the fruit roll-up. It's like the fruit leather. Yeah, and then the oak on this is just really beautiful. Like it's got, it's it's enough to counteract the mm -hmm. sweetness to give it some grounding on the nose. Yeah. I hope it's as good on the palate as it is I on the nose. I do too. I hope it doesn't lean too sweet on the palate. Stick into your glass. Because, oh, it is. Like oh a crazy ex-girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> She'd be crazy sometimes. All right, <laughs> let's get this on the palate. Hey, girl. Mm, that's she, good. She can come to the party. I yeah. like it. I'm in here. I'm here for it. I like this a lot. Yeah. The sweetness that was on the nose does translate to the palate, but mm -hmm. it's not sickeningly sweet. There's oak there to balance it out. So I love that because if it's too sweet, I'm out. Yeah. But it's it's a an appropriate amount of sweetness. Yeah, it's an appropriate amount of sweetness with an appropriate amount of sweet oak to counteract yeah. it. You're getting some spice in there to keep things interesting. Kind of like bit. a little bit of like a cracked black pepper sensation or like a pop rock style of sensation on the middle of the tongue. Mm. Just just a little bit. It's not firecrackers. Yeah. It's just itty bitty pop rocks. Just itty bitty. Itty yeah. bitty baby pop rocks. Yeah. It's going to so. Okay. So it does go more drying on the second sip. Um, it'll be interesting to take some more sip time with this once we do you know, our back and forth comparison. But initially, I like it. Yeah, I think the oak is coming through stronger on the second sip, which is where I think the drying is coming through for you. Mm -hmm. And the oak is, is kind of becoming a little bit of the star of the show. But mm -hmm. everything on the nose is there on the palate. The vanilla forwardness, that kind of fruit roll ups, fruit leather type of vibe to it. Really good glass one. Yeah. Can't wait to see how glass two compares. Yeah. If glass one is that good, let's go ahead and get it on the nose. Oh. oh, this is nice too. This is different though. It's darker. Darker. It's a little more like molasses, butterscotch, caramel, mm -hmm. um, but also very good. Like equally good, but very different. Yeah. Equal strength, saturation mm -hmm. of flavor on the nose, flavor, saturation of scent on the nose. There you go. Sometimes though, you can smell something so much you can also taste it. Oh yeah, for sure. Man, yeah, I like this a lot. Uh, everything you said spot yeah. on. I could even so, get a little maple syrup in this yeah. too. Yeah, so with this on the nose, so the first one I was afraid it was going to be too sweet on the palate. With this one on the nose, I'm afraid it might be too, like, flat on the palate. Okay. We'll see. Let's find out. Hmm. This mm. tastes more fruity than it smelled. I'm wondering if we're not getting some contamination from the first glass in that regard, but I like this a lot too. I like both it's of these. It's darker. It is darker. But All this stuff carries over. Yeah. It is also good. Yeah. A little fruity. It's not quite as dark as I thought it was going to be on the palate. Yeah. I think is. 
that's you, what, what that's kind of what at. I was getting at with the fruitiness of it. it. It tastes like a fruit leather. This one smells kind of like a fruit leather. This one has the flavor of a fruit leather, which is not as bright as like a fruit roll up. Yeah. Not as sweet as a fruit roll up, but kind of dense. Yeah, I could almost go like peanut butter and jelly sandwich on this one. Minus like it's peanut it, butter. I don't get peanuts. I'm getting some peanut in there. I'm getting that. I'm getting like a, a little bit of fruitiness. Let's get another sip of this okay. and see if we're getting any cross contamination. Good. It's, it's dry, more drying on the second sip as per usual, but I'll need some more time with this. But I also like this one. Yeah, I think all that comes through caramel, kind of dry roasted peanut type vibes to a little bit of fruitiness in there as well. It's peanut, it's peanut butter and jelly in a glass, basically. Maybe. These are going to be <laughs> very interesting. This is basically in these two glasses are most of the dinners of my childhood. It's peanut butter and jelly followed by bowl of vanilla ice cream. That checks out. Yeah, ate yeah, a lot of that as that, a kid. That checks out. And <laughs> Chef Boyardee ravioli. Yeah, that, I'm not getting that in either one of these though. I know. That would be weird if you did. Yeah, it would be. All <laughs> right, we're gonna take some time, clear our palates, start with the second glass, go back to the first. We both like both of these. Mm -hmm. So whichever one comes out in front is gonna be very interesting. Yeah. That's why we take this time to give both of them a fair shake. We'll be back with our full opinions in just a second. All right, this became very difficult for me. Where are you at on these so two? For me, taking some time and tasting them back and forwards actually cleared a lot of things up. Okay, I'm glad it did for one of us. Yeah. Where are you at? So, glass one, thumbs up. Glass two, two thumbs up. Whoa, the rare two thumbs up from Aaron. Yeah. I don't, that hasn't happened in a long time. It hasn't. There has been, cons there has been conspiracy theories that you don't even like bourbon. <laughs> on the channel because you never give anything two thumbs I'm up. I'm just really stingy with my thumbs, okay? Well, when she gives it, she means it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So for me, glass two became all of the things. As I drank it more, it became more, it stayed dark, but it also became more fruity in a dark way. Mm -hmm. So it was like sweet and dark, but not sugary sweet. It was very balanced and I felt like everything was very nuanced. Glass one still stayed tasting good. Everything I said initially stayed. However, it did continue to get more drying on the palate for me. Mm, okay. For me, I'm going to give both of them thumbs up. I like them both. I still honestly can't decide. I probably would lean towards glass two. Mm -hmm. I think like right now, if you push me and said, you can only have another pour of one of these, I would, I would gravitate towards glass two. Okay. But there are days where I would go for glass one. Yeah, glass over one, glass two. Glass one is good. I don't want anyone to think I yeah. don't like it. Nothing like this. Pattern. Nothing changed for me other than taking the time to take those sips and mm -hmm. give them their space. It just let me focus on each glass a little bit more and realize all the things I enjoyed about both of them. Mm -hmm. So thumbs up or thumbs up on each means I like them and like would like to have a bottle. Two thumbs up for Aaron. That's like ah, we gotta have a bottle. That means we like better get a bottle. Go of this. get one. However, for me that will be very mm -hmm. price dependent. Speaking of, great transition. Yep. Let's find out the prices and see if that changes our ratings. Okie dokie. So in our blind sample pool, glass number one is number 38. $50. I'm not mad at that price at all. No, that that for $50, I think that's great in what I just drank. Yep. Glass number two. $50. I'm happy with that. I'm definitely happy with that. Okay. So Glass number one was our technically our least preferred. You picked yeah. glass two, and I, I lean towards glass two. It was two. our least preferred. However, we are tasting two good pours. Yep. I enjoyed both of them. What is glass one? Number 38. Angel's Envy. Whoa. What? It's only 86 proof? What? Glass one? Yeah. Wow. Okay. These are our first whiskeys of the day, so they're really coming through. I'm just making sure. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm like, this is yeah. not what's number? Be. What's number two? Isaac Bowman Port Barrel Finished. Wow. I mean, 90, they didn't. 92 proof. These wow. drank. They well, drank above proof. They drank above proof, not because they were hot or spicy, but because they just had so much flavor concentration. Um, mm -hmm. They tasted to me like a very balanced, higher proof pour. Um, they didn't come across like super high proof to no, me. No, like over 100 proof, I would have guessed. Like, like 105, 107 proof, I would have guessed. Yeah, they were coming through about 100 proof for me. And, and these are our first whiskeys of the day. A lot of times we do warm our palate up, but wow. we're taking it a little easier today. So these are both 
coming through really nice. Surprise. I've had Angel's Envy before. Well, and we talk about Angel's Envy, and these are both port cask finish bourbons. Oh, okay. So they're finished. That makes a difference. Yeah. And they're both a little higher price for their proof point. Is Angel's Envy always port cask? Because I just said Angel's Envy. Yeah. Didn't say anything. It is. Question for you. I'm sorry. We did the price reveal. Did you, were you going to stay two thumbs up on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you find this though? Oh yeah. You can find that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like sweet but balanced bourbon and you're looking for something, you know. Well, and there's a a darkness to it that balances the sweetness for me, which I like. I think the port cast finishing comes in to the baseline bourbon and gives it a really nice depth and richness that just wouldn't exist if this product were not finished but 92 proof. And I think you can... You can prove this by getting the regular Bowman Brothers small batch, which is $30, and it doesn't have the depth that this port cast finish has mm. on it. So I think I thought both of these were pretty approachable. I mean, we're filming this full disclosure. It's like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. This type of proof point. 4.31 to be exact. This type of proof point for this time of day is kind of the perfect, mm-hmm. like it's flavorful, but it's not blowing our palates away. Yeah. These are both really nice, really enjoyable. So do we have yeah. a bottle of this glass too? Yeah. I mean, yeah, a bottle. We do. Actually, we have a bottle of this thanks to Barry Hawk. Oh. He came to town uh, a while back. Thank you, Barry. Bought a bottle of this, had it at a bottle share and left it for us. Oh, Barry. So thanks, Barry. Barry, come back and Cheers. visit us. You should get it. You got a two thumbs up bourbon from her. How about that? Oh, you did. Good job. All right. So this was a fun one. If you are newer to bourbon, I think both of these offer good flavor. You are going to pay a little bit of a premium for them, but I think they're worth trying. Mm-hmm. I absolutely I agree. do think they're worth trying because they you might really like them. And we're quite seasoned whiskey drinkers, and they both came across really nice today. They held their own as far as... I wouldn't have guessed that they were the lower proof points at all, which that's not to mean it's a bad thing. A lot of people like lower proof points. I think we just tend to gravitate towards higher yeah. proof, but we couldn't tell. Yeah. If you could tell that you like this channel, subscribe to it. Ooh, I'm trying to work a transition that here was somewhere. Rico Suave. Okay. <laughs> and then pointing it out is even more so, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like clutch. the Like the video if you liked it. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we go live. We do those once a month, and we would love for you to join us for a pour. That's it. Yeah, that's it for today. Be good to each other, guys. And until next time, cheers. cheers.